Aloha. Today is Life in the Law, and my guests are, and this is Carol Monley, and I have two wonderful guests, Sid Ayabi, who is a former president of the Hawaii State Bar Association and uh, an attorney in private practice, and also co-chair of this year's annual Bar Association Dinner. And Jody Yee. Jody is the current president of the Hawaii State Bar Association and is also a deputy attorney general in the State Department of Taxation. So welcome both. Thank you, Carol. So today's uh, program is called Inside the Bar 2016, and you both have had many years of experience at the in our Hawaii State Bar Association. I know, Jody, you've been also the president of the one of the Young Lords uh, Division, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the Bar Association. How big is it? Uh, how long has it been established? So the Bar Association has about 8,000 attorneys total right now. It was uh, established in 1899, so it's about 117 years old. Um, incorporated in 1985, but unified in 1989. What does that mean, unified? Unified means that if you pass uh, the Hawaii Bar exam and you become licensed in the state, you are automatically a member of the bar. You pay dues to the Bar Association. You also pay um, dues to the Office of Disciplinary Council and some, a couple of other organizations. Mm -hmm. But it's all um, unified. There are other voluntary bars, which would be like our county bars, Maui County Bar, Big Island has two bars, West and East, mm -hmm. Hawaii Island, the mm -hmm. Kauai uh, Island also has their own bar, but those are voluntary and the HSBA is a mandatory bar. So the lawyers on those islands are um, automatically a part of the Hawaii State Bar Association, but then can voluntarily join their own island bar association. Yes. I yes. see. Uh -huh. There's also, I should say, the Federal Bar Association, mm -hmm. Korean Bar, there's other smaller voluntary bars, but the bar, HSBA is a unified mandatory bar for the, of, of the lawyers in Hawaii. Okay. and. Uh, I know there are two sections. One is the Young Lawyers and one is the, what do you call the other the, section? The division. The there's division. There's, okay. there's a Young Lawyers division and then there's the uh, senior, senior Counsel division. I see. And how many are in the Young Lawyers division? You know, I was trying to find that out, but I, I wasn't able to get that info. Um, if you're an attorney below the age of 36 years old or within the first five years of passing your first bar, you're automatically a member of the Young Lawyers division. Mm -hmm. And then the senior uh, senior counsel division is, and I, I forget, is it 50? I, 50 and above? I, I I'm not sure. It seems it, very it's, young. It's, it's on our, <laughs> our website, and I, I know I'm getting close to about it. About 55 and above. <laughs> okay. All right. So you said about 8,000 lawyers now yes. in the bar here at 2016. And Sid, when were you president of the bar? Uh, I believe I was president in 1994, okay. some years ago. Right. So 20 plus years ago. Yes. And do you recall at that time how big the Bar Association was? Probably at that time it was about uh, 5,000. Okay, so we've yeah. increased by about 3,000. Yeah, 3,000, yes. Okay. So over the years, Jody, have you and Sid seen a change in a focus, in the focus of the Bar Association in terms of what it serves, how it serves our, our legal community? Well, let me uh, mm -hmm. start oh, off please, first. Yeah. I think uh, when I uh, became Bar President, uh, one of the uh, items uh, that was occurring to attorneys in general, not only locally but uh, nationwide, was what one would define as lawyer bashing. And there were so many jokes about lawyers. And I think one of the reasons why is uh, the legal community was not reaching out as much as it should do to provide legal services to those who were unable to afford uh, legal services. And I think the uh, one item that uh, I had uh, advocated is we start thinking of doing more pro bono type work. And I know... Uh, Can you define pro bono? Pro bono is basically providing legal services to those who uh, do not have the financial wherewithal to afford them. And I think that's one of the items that I uh, try to promote. And I think subsequent, uh, in subsequent years, the judiciary has really promoted that. I think it was under uh, Chief Justice Boone who had uh, made it not mandatory, but strongly recommended that we uh, do at least 50, minimum of 50 uh, hours of pro bono services a year. Mm -hmm. And even with um, retired Justice uh, Simeon Akoba, he advocated the access to justice, and that has uh, provided uh, access to those who, uh, primarily who go to court, who are not certain of how to handle themselves, and primarily in district court, that there is a room that is available for them to 
uh, seek the services of an attorney who is available to provide them with legal counsel. In fact, when he first started, that was uh, a few years ago, and uh, uh, the firm I was formerly associated with called at that time Ayabe Chong, Nishimoto, Sia, and Nakamura. We were the first firm to sign up in January of 2014, I think. I, it was, I think it was yeah, 2014. Not too long ago. And uh, I, I uh, attended several <clears throat> uh, time slots there, and I found it very rewarding for myself to be able to help people. So I think from the time I uh, served as president of the Hawaii State Bar Association to now, we've come a long way in providing pro bono services uh, to the public. Can we do more? Yes, but I think we've uh, gone a long way. Right. And Jody, I know that we provide these pro bono services through many avenues, right? One is through private firms, right, yes. like Sid just mentioned. But what are some of the other services and programs that the Bar Association supports or uses to provide services? The Bar Association actually has several um, programs where we go out into the community and do either education for students or, as Sid was mentioning, help other I mean, adults. Um, I think probably the biggest one is during May, there's Law Week. It's, um, I think it's well, actually... Well, May 1 is Law Day, right? Right. Around May, the world, Law Day. Law Day, and, and it's a big ABA event. And <coughs> so in Hawaii, we kind of stretched it out into a whole week. And um, I, I was part of this this last Saturday. Lawyers will go out into different particular, usually like a shopping center, and um, set up a set desk, up a table, and, mm -hmm. and anybody can walk up and ask general questions about law. Mm -hmm. We aren't creating an attorney-client relationship, but it's uh, legal information. And a lot of times, that's all the person kind of needs because they're not sure if it's really a legal problem that they have or, or their friend has but they, they're not sure what to do. So a lot of it is just listening, issue spotting, kind of helping to guide them in what way they need to go. And then if you do need to hire an attorney, the Bar Association does have a lawyer referral program too. So we can also help people to get in touch with an attorney in that particular practice area. So also. they can call into the Bar Association, <coughs> say I have a particular problem and ask for a referral. Yes. Okay. Yes. What are some of the other programs that uh, the Bar Association is? And Part of uh, uh, what the Volunteer Legal Services of Hawaii does, and we, mm -hmm. uh, I'm on that board, and uh, some of our funding is obtained through the uh, Bar Association through its uh, Hawaii State Bar Foundation. And we have what we describe as these pop-up clinics mm -hmm. uh, and different areas like they have in the Waipao, uh, I think, I believe, the, I went to the Waipao one, uh, Kalihi one I went to, and then in Waipao they had it at uh, one of the uh, facilities there. And they have a number of attorneys who would show up uh, primarily on Saturday. It goes from 9 to 12. And there are flyers sent out through the community to let them know that there will be uh, attorneys providing legal services without any charge. And that has been an excellent, excellent way. I've done uh, several of those. And you would be surprised the number of people who uh, appear to seek help. And I think for most of them, I don't think we can help all of them. But for most, I think we do a terrific service in providing them with legal counsel, which they otherwise could not afford. So that's one of the services that uh, the Volunteer Legal Services of Hawaii does and receives some funding through the Hawaii State Bar Foundation. Good. Did you know that the VLSH was actually uh, came from the bar? Oh, you're right. Yeah. That's right. I should, I should have mentioned that. Yeah, well, I wanted to, that's a, a good point, because so you have the Bar Association, which is a professional group of lawyers, nonprofit, but separately then you have these community organizations like Volunteer Legal Services, Domestic Violence Legal Clearinghouse, Legal Aid Legal Society. Aid. Correct. So they are all individual nonprofits, is that correct? You're correct. And then they all look for funding in different ways, yes. but include the services of lawyers, either in house or perhaps through volunteers like you, who help their clients or their interest base to go out in the community and serve. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. I see. So it's not a formal relationship. It's more, they stand alone by themselves, but use the lawyers in our community to help. There, there's kind of a, a both, I guess. I see. Like legal uh -huh. Aid and, and VLSH will have their own lawyers and their own programs and stuff, but they also do help. Like Sid mentioned, the access to justice rooms. The staffing is done by legal aid, or, or coordinated, I should say, by legal aid. They will use volunteer attorneys, but if they can't get anybody, they will send their own attorney, or sometimes the executive director of our bar association will go down and cover 
So it was kind of a coordinated effort between the judiciary, the legal service providers, the bar association, just to get attorneys in to staff the rooms and, and make sure that there's enough coverage. Uh -huh. I want to say that or Legal Aid does a training, I think, of the of the attorneys who are going to be in the rooms, and I think they put together the materials. I'm not yes, we, we did get some training uh, from Legal Aid. In fact, before our firm uh, appeared to um, provide services to the access uh, for justice room, uh, someone from Legal Aid did come to our office and on a Saturday uh, presented uh, the instructions. Because most of us, uh, for the, our firm, uh, my former firm, we did not do much of the so-called district type uh, court work. Mm -hmm. And so they came and instructed us on several areas where it's uh, typically the common complaints uh, that uh, they are faced with, foreclosure, summary possession, you know, matters of that nature, collection uh, matters. And so they gave us an excellent uh, instruction and uh, how to handle these matters and so I thought that helped me because I don't do collection or summary position but at the end of the three-hour session with the instructions received I, I you thought knew enough to I knew enough <laughs> to provide I thought reasonably good counsel and we also do this on the neighbor islands for different yes yes communities. the neighbor islands are called the self-help centers and there's one in each of the uh, main courthouses yeah well this brings up a perfect segue into the, one of the activities of the Bar Association, which is the upcoming annual dinner, yes. right? So tell us a little bit about that. And I know Sid is co-chair, and yes. of course you're president. Yes. So tell us, when is the next, when, when is this annual bar dinner? So August 20th. Mm -hmm. Mark that on your calendars, please. <laughs> yes, and it's the name of the dinner is Motions, Mirth, and Madness. And what is the theme of the dinner this year, Sid? It roast to honor C.J. Ron Moon. In fact, Ron Moon was a former part of mine uh -huh. many, many years ago. Right. And Ron Moon is now a retired Chief Justice. Yes. Yes. And so this roast, tell us a little bit about the roast. Well, uh, it, uh, sometimes you want to say it's a roast or perhaps a toast. It depends on uh, <laughs> how these uh, <coughs> speakers who are uh, coming uh, will say. So to me, come in uh, to the dinner and you will see whether it's going to be a roast or a toast, but it's basically to give tribute to uh, C.J. Moon, who uh, served on the Supreme Court for about 17 years. Prior to that time, he served for about six, I think, six years at the circuit court uh, level and uh, has accomplished much. And I think uh, one of the tributes to him was the naming of the uh, Kapolei Judiciary Complex as the Ronald T.Y. Moon uh, Kapolei Complex. And, right. and uh, the reason I think uh, Senator at that time, uh, former state Senator uh, Colleen Hanabusa, uh, recommended that the name of the judiciary complex there in Kapolei be changed because of his dogged effort to get funding for the construction of the facility out in the Kapolei area. Yes, that's great. Well, we're going to take a short break right now and come back and talk a little bit more about the annual Hawaii State Bar Association dinner and its beneficiaries how it's going to help the community, and also more about Inside the Bar. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Aaron Wills. You are watching ThinkTechHawaii.com. I am the host of the show, Rehabilitation. And coming soon. You can watch us live at ThinkTechHawaii.com at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. I will see you there. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Start your Pauhana weekend off with the show where I talk to people about issues pertinent to Hawaii. You can see my previous shows at my blog, kawilucas.com, and also on Think Techs. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Carol Monleaf for today's edition of Life in the Law, Inside the Bar 2016. And I'm here with my guest, Jody Yee who is the current president of the Hawaii State Bar Association, and Sid Ayabi, who is mm -hmm. a 
president in the 1990s and is currently the co-chair of the Bar Association's annual dinner. So before we went to break, we talked about the annual bar dinner and uh, it is honoring this year C.J. Ronald Moon, who uh, did a lot for our community in terms of, as you said, opening up the um, Kapolei area. And was there any other particular um, theme or, or important um, goal that his particular court or time? Well, there's a, a number of uh, cases that he's famous for, but I, I don't think I want to go through so many no. of them. Uh, but uh, there are a number of cases that uh, <clears throat> people have talked about, the Supreme Court cases. But I think uh, one thing that he did do, he expanded the judiciary. And what was in dire need was uh, better uh, facilities. And during his administration, you had a, a new judiciary complex on Kauai. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think on Maui, uh, was it? No, not on Maui, on the Big Island, you had new uh, judiciary. So he really pushed hard to get funding for the judiciary to have better facilities to properly serve the community. community. So I think that's one area that he really uh, strongly pushed to get uh, better uh, facility for the judiciary as well as expanded the number of uh, judges that you know we needed because you started to have special drug court uh, right. so that was a big thing for him the drug court where you had certain uh, positions open to have that particular judge handle drug court matters because you know like uh, other states we have the drug problems and you needed to address them so uh, his push was to have a judge that would handle not exclusively pr primarily Right. Drug court matters. And I know a lot of the family court um, programs have been developed under him. Yes, yeah. they have. Uh, we talked about earlier how the Bar Association's, one of its primary focuses is to help the community. And we talked about different organizations. And so I understand the Bar Association has uh, some beneficiaries of this particular dinner, right? We're all going to have fun, <coughs> but for the purposes to actually raise money. And what, what, where does the money go, Judy? So the beneficiaries for the, uh, this year's dinner, as we mentioned, the, the Access to Justice Rooms on Oahu, there's also the Health Help Centers on the neighbor islands, the Girls' Court is another big beneficiary, and the primary beneficiary is the Hawaii State Trial Judges Association to educate and um, help our judges to, I guess, self-educate as well as teach each other. Um, I see. So I think so, that's so Tell us a little bit about the Girls' Court. I've never heard of that. Well, girls' court is a, a, one of the specialty courts, like Sid mentioned, mm -hmm. and it's uh, focus or, or um, I guess, attention is to girls and to help them um, to bond and to um, develop in ways that are not necessarily able to be addressed just by one court hearing. And, and so these are girls who come in through uh, the system because of some infraction or something and then as opposed to being mainstreamed through the main court system they are segregated into a girls court and get more support the juveniles huh? so juveniles. Juvenile yeah, I see. Uh -huh. i'm not sure if it's an age but group or how they are selected mm -hmm. but they take them to do events together and, um, and uh, kind of outside and to give them more support as opposed to uh, i guess just um, being alone in a court proceeding. I see. That sounds good. And is it only on this island, or is it on every I think, island? I know there's one on Kauai, too. I'm not sure about the other neighbor islands, though. I see. How, how are the ticket sales going? Well, the ticket sale is going very well. And where, where is it going to be? Where's the dinner? It's going to be at the Hawaii State Convention Center uh, on August 20. Uh, starts at 5.30. So it should be a, a great event for uh, great beneficiaries and that's the importance of that dinner. The dinner primarily is to raise funds so that we can fund uh, various uh, organizations who can serve the community in providing uh, legal services. So I, I think the uh, um, purpose of it is great. I understand that the, there's a Hawaii State Bar Foundation also that helps uh, administer the funds. Is that the nonprofit? Right. The Bar Association itself is actually a 51 c 3 under the IRS code, um, but there, it, uh, another related organization is the Bar Foundation, which is a 51c3, so it's, it's designated a charity by the IRS. Um, any donations would be tax deductible. It has a different board, a different mandate, and um, so they work together to put on events, but they are separate entities. It's kind of a tax thing, but um, 
it, on the plus side of it, it means there's so much more attorneys involved to help out, um, to figure out who's going to get grants and who's going to um, be the beneficiaries and et cetera. Great. So uh, tell us in general the uh, recent, of course, news about lawyers and the fact that lawyers are having, there are many lawyers right now and uh, law schools are typically in the news are some are shutting down or reducing the size of their classes. Um, bar passage rates are lower. The cost of legal education is higher. Have you seen how that's impacted our Hawaii State Bar Association? Actually, it hasn't really impacted us in Hawaii too much. Um, we were concerned when we heard about the law school numbers going down, but it seems like our law school has been doing pretty well. They also, since... Are you a graduate of our law school? I am. I'm you a proud are. graduate of the Richard... <laughs> William S. Richardson oh, School Richardson. of Law. Sorry, it's been a while. Um, but since that time, they've actually added on a summer program. They've actually added on the part-time evening program. So they do have a lot. And even the class sizes are much bigger than when I was there. And it wasn't as long ago as some of my <laughs> fellow right. colleagues. Well, I know you have two daughters who graduated from the law school, yes. too, right, Sid? Yeah. Um, my number one and two both graduated from the William S. Richardson uh, School of Law. And I have spoken to the Dean Abby Seufer, and uh, I believe uh, this is one of the few law schools in the nation that has not uh, been, uh, have seen the significant decline in uh, applications. So the uh, applications are still high, and uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, my two daughters uh, received an excellent education from the William S. Richardson School of Law. And in, in general, uh, how is Hawaii as a legal uh, community keeping up with the changes in technology in the law in terms of rapid use of whether it's social media or uh, research, uh, things well, like that? It seemed, I mean, this is not scientific, but anecdotally, it seems mm -hmm. a lot more lawyers are telecommuting mm -hmm. or um, working out of their houses. Um, especially from what we understand, the neighbor islands, um, um, mm -hmm. lawyers who are taking the professionalism course have commented that they're moving here from other states, working on Maui, for example, telecommuting. Um, law is a profession that we can do uh, uh, quite a bit of it, actually, I guess, uh, remotely. And they like our lifestyle, and they want a better quality of life for their families. So uh, again, it's anecdotal. It's not scientific, but right. it sounds like that's also brought in a, a handful, at least um, each professionalism course, so that we kind of like could keep our our bar membership up. I know you you said you worked for the state. Uh, your uh, attorney deputy General's? attorney general is that also true in the state uh, attorney general's office that you're able to work remotely? <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> uh, my understanding is it was discussed, <laughs> but they haven't gone that way yet. Uh -huh. I mean, there is a whole lot of email. Um, in that sense, we, we can check our emails remotely. Most of us do, especially, especially during ledge season. We have to check our bills. Um, but technically right now, we're not supposed to be doing all of our work from home, for example. I but I, I should say, too, I do, have, I do know of at least one person in my department who has had health issues and does a lot of work um, you know, from home with her secretary in the office and, and emailing things back and forth. And, and I, I mean, it's mm -hmm. not all of us sit in one firm or, or one floor like back in the day now. It's, but it's how about in mediation different. then, Sid? Because I know you do a lot of mediation now. Have, has technology changed the way you um, conduct uh, mediation? I, I think the mediation has basically uh, remained the same. You, you know, meet, get together. Uh, so you do have uh, people present at a conference room where you meet, although I did do a mediation with a uh, federal mediator on a uh, employment issue mm -hmm. n a number of years ago where we went to a federal court and we're looking at the fellow on, uh, on a TV, on a screen, and he was able to settle the case after six hours, so that worked, and I thought, wow, that was interesting not to have the person physically present. But I don't see that happening uh, often. Uh, that was a rare occasion. Basically, uh, technology, uh, you get your briefs through the email, which uh, typically you don't need hard copies anymore, but I think to uh, have the mediation be successful, you really need the physical presence of the parties so that you I can see. actually uh, have direct communications with them. I think that, that's a preferred way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Does the bar have a section or 
uh, a committee on focusing on technology? We do have a technology section, uh -huh. uh, committee, yeah. And what, what some of the things, do you know what some of the, what they're working on, some of the interesting things that we could look forward to as members of the bar? Uh -oh. I hate to admit it, but I just found out that we apparently have some kind of Twitter uh, <laughs> feed that I have not been participate again because I don't really know what that is yet. And well, I, and at least I, we're moving forward. <laughs> That's a good... I got I an iPhone thought. this year. Yes. <laughs> Just so I could uh, text. I, I'm up to texting. So oh, good. apparently oh, good. tweeting is yes. next. I've heard it's not Twittering, it's tweeting. Yes, but the right verb. Okay. So, so the bar does have a Twitter feed. Yes. If you're interested, please contact them and ask them about it because I'm... I, I still have to figure it out myself. Right. So what's the Bar Association's website so for people to... HSBA.org. HSBA.org. That one is the know. website. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of information on there about um, open judicial uh, positions and the application deadlines, the upcoming events, upcoming CLE that the Bar is putting on. CLE, Continuing Legal Education, right? Um, bar dinner, yeah. how to buy tickets to the bar dinner. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Or make a donation. Yeah, make a donation, yeah. absolutely. So uh, on our bar association and of course our state, we're so uniquely situated here in the middle of the Pacific. How has that uh, impacted with the globalization of the you know, world economy? Have you seen an influx of more um, opportunities for our lawyers to do international work or vice versa, international other lawyers coming here to seek are lawyers to help them? Well, the bar does have, oh, sorry. No, but no, go ahead. Um, sister relationships with bars in uh, Tokyo. The Daiichi Tokyo Bar is one of our sister relationships. There's another relationship with some, I think, a few cities in China and around the Pacific. So our attorneys and, you know, the foreign attorneys have been reaching out and making connections. Um, Part of it translates into trips back and forth to mm -hmm. meet each other. When they come here, we host them. And then when our de delegation goes over there, we get hosted. And um, it helps because then they know who practices in this area. Right. Right? They can make a contact, pick up a phone, and call different right. people. Okay. We, have a we, few, just, yeah, we have a few firms that, uh, from the mainland that have uh, branch offices here. So, But I have not seen a significant change. And okay. on an international level, you have more in the uh, real estate area where uh, attorneys here are doing uh, some international real estate law, right. working with other uh, countries like Japan, uh, the Asian countries. Okay. We just have a few more seconds, and I just want to put up a picture of Dan Case, who recently passed away, one of our senior members of the bar and who was one of our living legend lawyers whom we um, highlighted last year. And I wanted to say, just to say a few words as we close about well, Dan Case. Uh, we lost a, a, a good family uh, man, a civic leader, and a very accomplished attorney. I w had the good fortune of knowing Dan uh, and had a few matters which I dealt with him. And from my personal experience and comments I've heard uh, from others, he, is a very prof he was a very professional person, uh, civility to the nth degree, and it was just a class, classy person. Thank you. And uh, uh, he certainly was involved in a lot of civic organizations uh, and a devoted family member. He, his wife, Carol, they were married for 61 years. Yes. Well, he was a role model to all of us, to many of us, and we will miss him. On behalf of Life in the Law and Think Tech Hawaii, I want to thank Sid, Sid Ayabi and Jody Yee, wishing you the best at the Bar Association dinner and this year at the Bar Association. Oh, thank, thank you, you Carol. Carol. Thank you.